Hi, I'm Ulrich von Tolstadt. And I'm Alfred Bjornsson. Welcome to Von Tolstadt Fight Club. Welcome back to Von Tolstadt Fight Club. In this series, we explore techniques and principles based on Italian rapier fencing from the late 16th and early 17th centuries. Our main sources for this are Fabris and the Vienna Anonymous texts, as well as plenty of competition experience in real life against resisting opponents. At Von Tolstadt Fight Club, we try and focus on just one technique per episode to really break everything down and keep it simple to learn and utilize. If you haven't watched the first episode on closing the high inside line, I recommend you go do that now to help put this video into context. In today's episode, we're focusing on two ways to shut down the high outside line of attack so that your opponent can't hit you on that line. To start with, the high outside line is everything above your guard and to the right of your arm if you are right-handed. The directions are reversed if you are in a left-handed guard. The high outside line is one of the most common areas that your opponent is going to try to attack you, so it's absolutely crucial that you know how to close this off to deny that line of attack to your opponent. Many people, when attempting to defend the high outside line, will roll their guard into seconda, or a high seconda, in order to get their true edge on the opponent's blade and place their strong on the opponent's weak. You'll also notice in the classic seconda position that your point is still centered on your opponent. The problem with this standard Seconda Guard is that it places your point at an angle going away from the opponent's sword. If you watch the first video on the high inside line, you will know that this action does not close the line and that your tip needs to cross over the opponent's sword at an angle to close off the line. Because of this, there are two guards that are much better suited to get your point over the opponent's blade in the outside line. The first one is Terza. You'll notice that I'm extending my arm and pointing my tip up and at an angle over my opponent's blade with my forte out towards their double A, AKA I have a stronger part of my blade on a weaker part of theirs. The true edge of my weapon is pointed down onto my opponent's blade. My sword is on top of theirs. The point is aimed a little out of presence, which if you watch the first video on closing the high inside line, you understand why we do that instead of keeping our point completely online. Over time, you learn to make these closures more and more subtle so that your point is more online and what you are doing is less obvious and therefore more effective. Again, the point is aimed up over your opponent's sword and pointing outside of their non-sword shoulder. Because of this action, Terza is able to close the line where a classic seconda is not. As you can see here, the terza is much more suited to closing down the outside line than seconda, even though the true edge is not fully rolled towards the opponent's blade, but terza is just one option for closing this line. The next method to close the line is a modified quarta, using the false edge of my blade. This is modified because my arm is essentially in a terza position, but my hand is in quarta, so rather than a bent arm across my body like you often see in the classic quarta guard, my arm is relatively straight behind my blade. The elbow has a little bend to it as it always should even when extended. Again, the arm is extended because it puts the forte of my blade out toward the double A of my opponent's blade. The guard is just under their blade with the stronger part of my blade on a weaker part of theirs. The point is aimed up and over the opponent's sword, and look, the line is closed. Sometimes you'll hear people say things like, you should never use your false edge to close a line or parry, but as you can see, in this case, the false edge works just fine. Because of the fact that my point is pointing over my opponent's sword, out of presence, over their non-sword arm, and I have a stronger part of my blade over a weaker part of theirs, they cannot resist my false edge. Even here, when he's using two hands, my false edge still stays exactly where I want it. So again, let's recap what I'm not doing. I'm not sweeping my elbow and sword into a classic seconda position. 
this does not close the line and my opponent's attack can still come through. I'm also not pressing or shoving on my opponent's blade to the side. I'm either not touching their sword at all or barely touching it in order to just close the line. I'm not pushing sideways. Again, I am simply placing my sword in a position to close the line. I have my strong on their weak, my arm is more extended than not, my tip is aimed up and over their sword outside of presence. Once we are able to close the line properly, we can successfully parry an opponent's attack on that line. If my sword is in a different position, and I notice that my opponent is attacking down the high outside line, I can quickly place my sword there to close and parry as shown here. Notice that even though I start somewhere else, I still go to the same correct line closure position. To practice this technique, Grab a partner and have them stand on guard with an attack aimed at the high outside line. Walk slowly towards them as you close the line, extending your arm to place a stronger portion of your blade over a weaker portion of theirs with your point pointing up, over and across their blade, slightly out of presence, just over their non-sword shoulder. Now simply walk forward. If you do it right, their blade will go out of presence and you will not be hit. Just as in the first episode, do not worry about hitting them worry about not getting hit yourself. As you get more comfortable with the action, have your opponent throw slow attacks down the high outside line as you close and parry it with the proper blade position. Remember to keep your forte forward towards their double A and your point up and over their sword. As you get more comfortable, you can increase the speed and resistance to ensure that you are truly and fully closing the line. Again, do not focus on hitting the opponent Focus on just closing the line and not getting hit. In the next episode, we're going to discuss how to use these line closures to step into measure, gain your opponent's blade, and then thrust them in opposition as an offensive action. Your homework is to work on closing the high outside line and get comfortable with it so you can build up to the next lessons. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time on Von Tolstad Fight Club.